Long ago, there lived a man, blessed by the gods and revered by the people as their savior. His name was Arden Lucis Kylum, and he was to have served as the first king of Lucis. as 28-year-old Mars Sapientia. Although Officer Sapientia allegedly reported for duty at his appointed time, fellow officers say he disappeared soon after and has not been sighted since. Officer Sapientia is a tall, fair-skinned male and was last seen wearing his Border Patrol fatigues. Anyone with information on Officer Sapientia's whereabouts are requested to contact the Crown City Police immediately. And now a word from the Public Information Bureau. Today marks the anniversary of the founding of the Kingdom of Lucis. The Founders Day Committee has prepared a number of attractions in honor of this auspicious occasion, including a parade around the Citadel, as well as a statue of the Founder King himself. All are welcome and encouraged to participate in today's festivities. This has been a message from the Public Information Bureau. What about you? Now, onto the weather. Shouldn't you be looking for your buddy? Today in the Crown City, we expect mild oh, and sunny no. weather with nothing but blue skies. I'm on special the assignment. The may experience some inclement weather, starting in the evening and continuing throughout the night. <sighs> that concludes today's news and weather. <sighs> Just a 
people to participate in the festivities. Circling the Citadel alongside the statue of the Founder King, Somnus Lucis Chiron. So, this is the city Somnus built. Built on the back of his own flesh and blood. Just look at them, free of care and unaware of the war beyond their wall. In order to ensure the safety of all festival goers, we ask that you please follow all staff instructions. Vehicular access will also be limited in some areas around the Citadel for the festival's duration. In addition, traffic will be stopped entirely during the parade. We thank you for your cooperation. What need is there to worry when brick and mortar blinds them to the suffering outside? Why venture out into the world when you feel so safe within? <sighs> what a life to live. This is the statue of the Founder King? I see the sculptor took quite a few liberties. So what do you think, son? Not every day you get to see the King's personal bodyguards up close. They're so cool! I want to be a royal guard someday! And that must be the King's castle. We should. Okay. No, no, of course. Yeah. I want yeah. 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 Absolutely. Now, okay. let the fireworks begin! Oh, Arden, you can't expect me to believe that. <gasps> oh, but I do. You have my word. <laughs> well, in that case... <laughs> <sighs> you look exhausted, my love. Are you all right? <laughs> I am. Hmm. Ah. The gods bless me with a power and a purpose to cure people of what ails them. I must see their will be done. Your devotion shall not go unnoticed. The gods will doubtless be watching over you. Just as I shall be watching over you every step of the way. <laughs> 
It seems to me the cure for your exhaustion is comprised of two things, one of which is rest. Oh? And the other? <laughs> is me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's alive. <laughs> Just as the ancient texts told. Uh, who? Take him away. Roger that. We'll transport the subject to your location. And we'll have the medical team ready as planned. What's the situation over there? Nothing to report. We're just... Can't let that thing off this island. Stop. Cease this. Cease this. At once.
must I atone! <laughs> Era. Somnus. Forgive me, brother, but the throne seats only one. Era. Uh, gods, no. Arden Azunia, Chief Bisithia would like to see you. <sighs> Nothing here to interest me. Might as well head out. Uh, I dare say this outfit wasn't tailor-made. Not the most enthralling view.
Gods above, we thank you for the bounty you have laid before us. Don't want your food getting cold, do you? Are you enjoying your stay? No. You've been asleep for years. Learning to appreciate the waking world will take time. Perhaps I can help enlighten you while we dine. How long has it been since you brought me here? 204 days. Roughly seven months or so. Then again, the Lucians had you locked away in that prison for nearly two millennia. I'd be more surprised if you hadn't lost all concept of time. You must loathe those Lucians for what they did to you. Uh. Was your examination of me a fruitful one? Oh yes, you've proven far more fascinating than expected. <laughs> no wonder they kept you locked away. To think the powers of a demon could dwell within the heart of a man, it's incredible. The Star Scourge doesn't sap your life force, it gives you more. Your cells can regenerate themselves, and you can demonify other life forms as well. There's no doubt you a are monster. not a monster, a marvel. <laughs> I can't wait to unravel all your mysteries. What is this food? Meat. Cloned in this facility. D cloned? We cultivated somatic cells, used them as donors to fuse the nucleus transplant cells to the recipient oocytes, and then we- Enough! I've no ear for the ramblings of a lunatic. What is it you want from me, anyhow? What about me interests you so? You said it yourself, didn't you? You were chosen by the gods. And frankly, with powers like yours, I'd say you're nearly a god in your own right. We need those powers that you possess. With your strength on our side, we could finally put an end to the gruesome war with Lucis. You too must desire the fall of the kingdom that cast you into exile. <sighs> My desires are all in the past. The man who wronged you may have died long ago, but his descendants live on to this day. Surely you must bear them some feelings of ill will. My feelings are none of your concern. Come along. This is the fruit of my labor. A small portion of it, that is. I envy you. A human life is too short to truly understand all there is to know about the world. Go on, have a look. Oh. It has been estimated that Eos came into existence some 4.5 billion years ago. 
Ancient myths tell tales of six protector gods who first alighted upon Eos in the ancient Solheim era. Fossils thought to be remains of the oldest members of the human race were discovered in the Pistala region. Some claim that humans discovered fire in the Sukarp region even before the dawn of the Solheim civilization. According to legend, the fire god Ifrit first bestowed his burning wisdom upon a man who later sat the throne of Solheim. The mechanized civilization of Solheim is presumed to have originated in the Disguy and Klang regions. Exactly when the civilization rose and fell, however, remains the subject of much investigation. The enormous crevasse separating the regions of Klang and Disguy is known as Telpar Crag. It is here that the War of the Astrals is said to have taken place. When Ifrit tried to reduce mankind to ash, the other gods fought back, and some claim this clash caused the collapse of Solheim. It is said that Ifrit, having lost the War of the Astrals, was interred atop the Rock of Ravito. After the war, the ice goddess Shiva allegedly sank into a deep slumber, nestled in the Gorvas Rift of Volup. To this day, no one knows what became of the Blade God, Bahamut. The Earth God Titan can be seen supporting the meteor at the heart of the Disk of Kothis in the sky. As for the Storm God Rama, Legend has it he sealed himself away within Fosha Hollow in the sky. The sea goddess Leviathan disappeared in the wake of the war. Some say she swam below the waves and slumbers beneath the city of Altitia. Some 2,000 years ago, the gods granted Somnus Lucis Kylum two gifts. The sacred stone and ring. With these in hand, he founded the kingdom of Lucis. In the centuries since, Lucis has managed to expand its territory while struggling to suppress a parasitic plague. As of ME722, Moore's Lucis Kylum sits the throne as the 112th monarch of his line. Regis Lucis Kylum is King Moore's firstborn son, and first in line to succeed his father. Angelguard, off the coast of Golden Key, is an uninhabited island that Lucians regard as sacred ground. Ancient texts tell of a monster known as Adagium supposedly sealed away within, but investigations into its existence have yet to provide conclusive evidence. Soon after the establishment of the Kingdom of Lucis, House Fulorae founded the nation of Tenebrae. The Empire began its occupation of Tenebrae in ME359, a move that was initially met with much apprehension. In order to assuage the dissenters, the Empire preserved the Oracle's home of Fenestala Manor. This concession was partially made for political purposes. House Florey enjoys close ties with the line of Lucis. The Accordo Protectorate has developed into a bustling league of towns at the heart of maritime trade. In ME606, the Empire won an important battle against the Allied forces of Lucis and Accordo, and in turn, annexed the Protectorate. The country is steeped in traditions and cultures that are incompatible with imperial rule, so the Empire has permitted it a measure of relative political autonomy. Centuries after the founding of Lucis, a movement to revive the lost civilization of Solheim arose around the Weltham region. Leading the charge was House Aldercat, whose brave deeds brought about the rise of the Niflheim Empire. The Empire built upon Solheim's magic technology and employed it for military use. This new firepower helped the Empire fell its foes, taking Tenebrae in ME359 and Accordo in ME606. As of ME722, under the direction of Emperor Aedilus Aldercat, the Empire is developing new arms fusing Magitech with demons. Vestiges of the ancient Solheim civilization can still be seen in the ruins of Piteus and Steel of Grove. Several ancient structures also dot the forest of the Fall Grove that encircles Castlemark Tower. Excavation of these various sites is currently underway. In ME501, during an expedition in the Yulwat region, 
the Imperial Army discovered a new species known as demons. Do watch your step, won't you? Demons were first officially recognized as a new species roughly 200 years ago. According to ancient texts, however, humans have suffered from a parasitic plague wrought by the demons for upward of two millennia. Demonification is caused by a mutant strain of plasmodia that takes root in living creatures and changes their cellular structures. Infected creatures begin to disperse miasmal particles, the spread of which is known as the Star Scourge. This model is a replica made from plaster poured into a demon-shaped cavity discovered deep underground. Demons sublimate when their vital functions cease, so this particular specimen must have vaporized after the mud around it had already solidified. Scientists believe this subject burrowed into the Earth in order to shield itself from the light of the sun. I presume to be Lucian warriors and the kings of Fjord. I've learned a great deal about the first king of Lucis, but I never knew he was second in line. It seems to depict a legend in which the chosen king dispels the darkness. If that's true, does that mean Lucis intends to someday stand above all others? <laughs> Their trifling tales mean nothing in the face of our superior technology. Only we can restore balance to our world. At the top of the painting, we see the Oracle herself. The bloodline of the Oracle is one of the oldest in Eos, originating with Eromirus Flore. Only they possess the power to commune with the gods. This painting depicts the Oracle as some goddess of light herself. She'd doubtless prove a powerful ally if she could be persuaded. On the sides of the frame, we see the Hexathion. Conspicuously absent is the traitorous god of fire who started the Great War of Old. Perhaps developing a deeper understanding of the demons will bring us closer to comprehending their divine counterparts. But what if I were to find a way to combine those two disparate elements? By my estimation, the grotesque creatures depicted here are likely demons. Could this mean these monsters will be harbingers of the apocalypse? If only we could find a way to harness their power for ourselves. The line of Lucis was chosen to eradicate evil from Eos. And with the Divine on their side, how could they fail? Demons of the 
aversion to light, they typically stick to the shadows until the sun fades and the night falls. Adagium, however, is different. Unlike his demon brethren, he can still function uninhibited in broad daylight. Of course, the ultraviolet rays harm him, much like they would any other demon. Yet his cells regenerate quickly enough to essentially negate the damage. Yeah. It stings. Yeah. Like the light of the sun. Perhaps uh, I'd best cover up. Adagium. That is what the Lucians call the monster they imprisoned for 2,000 long years. His powers surpass those of any mortal, and his body is all but impervious to attack. It's no wonder the Founder King sealed him away on the Isle of Angel Guard. He undoubtedly feared this monster might challenge his reign. It seems fortune smiles upon me. Though the Lucians kept him locked away for 2,000 years, I've managed to secure Adagium for myself. The raging winds and stormy seas may have cast all others away, but the waves parted for me that day and led the way. While I've yet to conduct any official research, the potential he proved in combat was most promising. I estimate his powers easily surpass anything mankind has ever seen. Perhaps this streak of luck has just begun. Fascinating, isn't it? I pored over the ancient texts and found scarcely a mention of you. I barely believed you existed till I saw you with my own eyes. With your help, my research is proceeding smoothly. You have my thanks. This must be how the gods feel looking down upon our world. Here we have a model of Imperial territory. It includes our present lands as well as our future acquisitions. Feel free to have a look. There's something you should see. Come with me. I found something most interesting on the Rock of Ravito. If my experiment on this specimen succeeds, it might provide the information you've been looking for. This way. Is that... Ifrit the Infernian. <gasps> you subjugated a god and brought him here? He was sound asleep, just like the legend said he'd be, so we put him on ice. Do you think you could turn him into a demon? If you managed to demonify a deity, you could learn truths no mere mortal could ever dream of knowing. You will access 2,000 years of his memories, and if you can control him, he'll be a weapon of supreme power. It's certainly an enticing offer, isn't it? Just think you could exact sweet revenge through divine retribution. How do you know what I want? I don't, but I know you have no other options. Well, shall we? Come see the fruits of my Magitech research. This way. The ancient civilization of Solheim, forefathers of our magic technology, once flourished on this land. Had they not incurred the wrath of the gods, they may have remained prosperous to this day. And you wish to restore them to greatness? To surpass them. Which is why I need you to lend me your strength. But I'm certain magic technology and demons are the keys to unlocking the door to a new future. Lucians? But how?
Kunmi squad, Adagium sighted. Initiating engagement. Requesting backup from Nimbus squad. Shutting down communications until all clear. Ah, so you've come to kill me, have you? Or die trying. Definitely with you and me. Oh, right. 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 Kingdom and burn them all to the ground. <gasps> no,
<gasps> I was the one chosen to be king. to Somnus, you had been chosen to be king. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I never dreamt he would try to kill you. But he did. <laughs> Somnus fooled everyone, so he could usurp the throne. Everything that happened, it's all his fault. No. Listen to me. It's my fault. I'm the one who ruined your future. This was divine retribution uh, for my sins. You've no sins to atone for. Uh, uh, gods! Answer me! Why have you burdened us with this fate? Era! Oh, oh, oh no! Era! Please! In the names of the gods above, Fulfill your calling, Arden, and punish me for my sins! Era. Kill me! That's right, kill her. Put that monster out of its misery, just like I did. Like you saved that innocent man by turning him into a demon. Please, Arden. You must live. I can't. Not without you. <laughs> Come. Why not give the lady what she wants? <sighs> <laughs> Once again, you failed to save her. No surprise. A monster can do not but destroy. <laughs> destroy everything you built. <laughs> Hear me, gods above. No longer shall I supplicate you for pardon. No longer shall I sojourn toward the light. Nay, the path I intend to tread is paved with blood and darkness. No longer shall I seek your guidance. This path is mine to tread alone. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Empire's demonic experiments bore fruit before long, precipitating the production of a Magitek infantry. As recognition for his contribution to this research, Arden Azunia was inaugurated as Imperial Chancellor. Thanks to its newfound firepower, Niflheim managed to break the stalemate that shackled the nation for more than a hundred years, and, in turn, forced Lucis to scale back its magical barrier. The untimely passing of King Mors ushered in the era of a new monarch, and the young Regis Lucis Kylum succeeded the throne. Meanwhile, Arden began to spread the Star Scourge throughout the world, stealing people's memories and learning as much about the kingdom as he could. In time, those memories began to merge with his own, gradually transforming him into a wicked echo of his former self. And now, at long last, the time for his revenge has come.